Hi folks, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and on this video I'm going to teach you the single most important tone exercise for saxophone and that is using harmonics or overtones. Now the most important thing about playing saxophone is your tone. After your tone there's rhythm because then you need two notes to get rhythm but first of all you've got the sound. The sound is everything. Now to get a really good sound there's one exercise which I'm going to teach you which is going to give you a phenomenal sound and it's really important. I call this the Lord of the Rings exercise because it's one tone exercise to rule them all. One of the questions I'm asked most often is how do I play really high notes on saxophone? How do I play in the altissimo range? Now this exercise is really going to help you with that because it forms the foundation of your altissimo playing. What we're going to do is we're going to tap right into the very DNA of the instrument, right into the DNA of the sax because we're going to unlock all the harmonics and overtones that make up the sound of your sax and I'm going to teach you how to control that and how to really bring on your tone. First of all this exercise may not be easy but what you need to do is just practice it each day Take your time, build up slowly, first of all work at level one, then work up to level two and level three and then over a long time you can do the advanced exercise when you've built up the control of those harmonics. If you're enjoying Get Your Sacks Together please do subscribe to the channel, click the bell to be notified when I upload videos, give it a thumbs up if you like the content, don't forget to go and check out my Instagram page and oh, of course down below you will find a link to get a free PDF which is going to have this tone exercise written out in full in all the keys that you need and you can use that for alto or tenor so that's fabulous. Get down there, click the link, go and get the free PDF, print it off and follow it along as we go through today's lesson. So first of all very quickly a little bit of background on these harmonics or partials. When we play a note on saxophone it sounds like we're just hearing one note but actually every note is made up of layers of harmonics or partials which give the saxophone sound its richness. So when you play a low C you can actually tune in and pick out the different harmonics that build up that sound which gives the saxophone its character. Now this is a naturally occurring phenomenon with any tube. You can like roar a bull roarer and you will hear these harmonics. You can blow a bottle, you can blow a flute on trumpet without playing any fingerings. You can have all these different harmonics and the same is true of sax. So let's get down to what the harmonics are. First of all we have the root or fundamental as it's called which is the lowest note of that tube. Now we are going to start with low C and it's the same for alto and tenor. The pitches that come out are going to be different and I'm going to demonstrate it on alto and tenor but the lowest note we're going to start with is a C. If you're more advanced you can start on the low B flat but I'm starting on the low C to keep things nice and simple. Now the first harmonic we're going to find is an octave above that which would be the C in the middle of the stave. The second harmonic is the fifth above that so that's a twelfth above the fundamental. And finally we're going to find the double octave so we're only going to work with the octave, the twelfth and the double octave but above that you have the major third and lots of other harmonics go up from there but to keep things simple for this video we're only going to work on three levels so that you've got the fundamental at the bottom, the first harmonic is an octave higher, the second harmonic above that is a twelfth above which is an octave and a fifth and finally you've got two octaves above the fundamental. So let's see how this works. Just to clear up the notation side of things the fundamental I'm just going to write as a normal note and you'll see this in the PDF that you can get in the description linked in the description. The fundamental will be a normal note, the harmonic will be a diamond shaped note and I'll also put the fingering that you're going to use in brackets down below because the fingering you're going to use is not the same as the harmonic which is going to come out. Now this will all become really clear when I demonstrate how to do this exercise. So here's how the exercise works. First of all we're going to play a low note. Now I'm going to demonstrate this with a low C 
If you're more advanced, you can start on the low B flat and you can find the whole exercise written out in the PDF, but we start on a low C and we just play a nice loud low C. Then, keeping exactly the same fingering and without using the octave key, we're gonna play the C above using the harmonic of the low C. Then, still in the same breath, we're gonna switch to a regular middle C fingering and we're gonna alternate between a harmonic C with the low C fingering and a normal C. But the same note is gonna come out, but we're changing fingers. Finally, using the long C fingering, we're gonna drop down and finish on the fundamental again. So, just to repeat that drill, we play a low C and we keep exactly the same fingers and play that note up the octave to the first harmonic. Then, we switch between the middle C fingering and the long C fingering and compare the difference and try and match the tone of the long fingering, the low C fingering, with the tuning of the middle C fingering. And then finally, we finish on the fundamental. So, the exercise is gonna sound like this. Great, so that's level one. We play the low note, the octave above, we alternate between the two fingerings, and then we finish on the low note. Now, moving on to level two, we do exactly the same thing, but this time we play the low note, and then we find an octave G instead of the octave C. So, we're gonna do the fundamental, we find our octave G, and then we alternate between a normal second octave G fingering and a low C fingering, but the same note is gonna come out. Now remember, the long fingering is gonna have a much bigger, fuller sound. So what we want to do is copy that big fat sound using the normal fingering, because remember, when we do a normal fingering, we're only using a smaller amount of horn, a shorter amount of tube. Whereas when we play the low fingering, we're using this whole tube, so we've got a big fat sound on it. Now the reason this tone exercise works is because we're trying to copy the sound of the big long tube, but using a shorter fingering. So we're gonna shape our mouth, open up our throat, draw up our jaw, and try and get a nice big sound on the normal fingering, comparing it to the harmonic sound. Now it sounds a bit complicated, but again, I'll demonstrate level two, and it sounds like this. Finally, we move on to level three. Now this time, same drill, we play the fundamental, but we find the C using the same low fingering two octaves higher. So that's second octave C. We find that harmonic, we alternate between the two fingerings, and then we finish off with the low note again, just like the other exercise. And again, remember, we're trying to copy the big fat sound of the harmonic with the normal fingering that you would use for that note. And you're gonna kinda reshape your mouth and just do anything you can with your jaw and your tongue position and a nice open throat to try and make the regular fingering sound as fat as the harmonic. Now over time, that's really gonna transform your tone. So this is how level three sounds. <laughs> Now, if 
finally, once you've got all that together, I'm going to show you an advanced exercise which is using bugle calls with an extra harmonic that we're going to add, which is the fourth harmonic, which turns out to be a high E. That is the major third of the key of the fundamental. So we've got the low C, and then we're going to practice this bugle call using the fifth, the root, and the major third of the fundamental. Now, this whole exercise is played only using a low C fingering. Your fingers do not move at all during this exercise. But remember, it's quite advanced, so just focus on level one, level two, level three, and then in due course, you can move on to this advanced exercise. Now, this is what it sounds like. Some of the greatest players in jazz, like John Coltrane especially, who pioneered it, and then all the modern players following it, notably Michael Brecker, have used these harmonics creatively in their own improvising. So I'm going to show you a super advanced lick. Uh, the fingerings and the um, notes are all going to be in the PDF down below, so go and check that out now. And it sounds something like this kind of thing that you can do once you've really started to master these harmonics. Check it out, this is pretty cool. So that's it for this week's lesson. Just take your time on these exercises, start simple, just work on the first level if you need to until you've got the control. Try and make it a daily practice, and in time, it's really gonna bring on your tone and give you a fantastic sound on sax. It's definitely the secret of how I ended up having a really good sound on sax, is doing these overtone exercises, so keep at it. Now, if you like the channel, please do subscribe, click the bell, to be notified when I upload new videos. Give it a thumbs up, comment, I'd love to hear your comments down there. Go and check out my Instagram page. And of course, don't forget, go down into the description to get your free PDF of the lesson, which has got the exercise written out for you, all the fingerings, make it really simple. That is a wonderful resource for you to use. And I'll see you next time on Get Your Sex Together. See you later.